That's a good shot. As you may have heard, Cobra has just released 500 sets of the new 3D printed limited iron, which begs the question, how good is this iron? Well, I'm about to find out. Now, as I described in one of my previous videos, what makes the Cobra limited iron special is that this club is 3D printed. So instead of being cast or being forged, like pretty much every other iron available out there is, this club is created over a 24 hour period in a 3D printer. It's basically created in this sort of orientation here, and the 3D printer drops in 316L stainless steel powder, one layer at a time, pass after pass, until this iron is finally created. And what that allowed Cobra to do is make internally a lattice structure, a very, very light, very strong structure in the center of the club. So instead of it being solid steel, or instead of it being um, a hollow body construction that is filled then with some type of a foam, like we're seeing from a lot of different um, game improvement clubs or many of the better player distance irons, this club has a totally unique structure. Now on the back, you're going to see a lattice structure here. That is cosmetic. This is 100% cosmetic. It doesn't go all the way through into the club because if it did, water, dirt, debris, etc., would get inside the club head and that would totally ruin performance, make it sound terrible. But Cobra wanted to show off the technology. So this is what it's going to look like on the inside, but this is not a pass-through section where you can actually get inside the club head. The biggest advantage to having a 3D printed iron and by having that lattice structure on the inside is that it removes so much weight from the center of the golf club it allowed Cobra to add massive amounts of tungsten in the form of weights out here in the toe and in the heel. And there's also a small tungsten weight up here in the hosel. And that creates extreme perimeter weighting without having to make this iron physically that much bigger. So what you end up with is a club that is really a game improvement iron, masked or disguised, if you will, as a better player's muscle back blade. If you're looking down at it, it's going to look very, very similar to the King Tour iron. That's the iron that Ricky Fowler is currently using and has been playing in his bag now for about a year and a half or so. So we're looking at a club that has a little bit of offset. It has a relatively thin top line, a fairly narrow sole. It has a little bit more um, leading edge wear, so it should get into and out of the turf fairly well. But I'm really curious to see how is this iron going to perform? Is this going to feel and look like a blade? Is it going to perform like that better player distance iron or some type of a game improvement iron? I've come here to Chris Cody's golf shop in Portland, Connecticut, where I'm able to jump on a launch monitor, get some really good data and find out exactly what we're dealing with here. Well, for the first hit of a day to go off at uh, 170 carry, 179 total, I pulled the heck out of it, but uh, that's some pretty impressive distance. Say so the look over the ball is fantastic. The top line appears to be a little bit more curved. It's not got that sort of really razor sharp, straight um, sort of angular look. The blade length is pretty compact. I mean, this definitely looks like a better player's iron, possibly a better player's distance iron, but the blade length is short. That felt fantastic. Probably pulled just a little bit. Yup, but again, 175 carry, 185 total, almost 5,000 spin, just a little bit under. The feel is absolutely fantastic. 172 carry, 183 ball speed. Cobra really didn't talk about this being an especially lower spin product, but um, I'm not really sure why that is. That's a good shot, a little bit higher spin, but again, only 5,100 and change with a seven iron, 170 carry, 171 total. So it's going high, um, but it's not spinning. So right off the bat, I can tell you that the iron feels much more stable than you would have anticipated. Cobra's talked a lot about that, and I think that that's something that definitely comes through. When you've got such a reduction of weight in the middle with a lot of weight in the form of those tungsten weights thrown out in the perimeter, in the toe, in the heel, that's exactly what should happen. This club should want to resist wobbling on off-center hits. It should feel really stable. It should feel strong. It does. Felt pretty good. Again, probably left. They're all in the consistent range right there. So I'm hitting most of these seven iron shots off to the left. That's some pilot error. They're also, though, going a very consistent distance. When we look at that spread, again, 174 carry, 185 total. 4,800, almost 4,900 RPM of spin. So from what I'm seeing with this is that you get loads of distance, loads of stability, um, very low spin. 
So this was a pretty typical shot uh, that I had. And if we take a look at some of the numbers on it, um, 119 ball speed, 23 degree launch angle, spin rate of 5,182, um, the landing angle of 53.7. So that ball is going to stop. There's no question about it. That ball is going to stop. Carry distance of 170, total distance of 171. It did stop. But that number right there to me, that 5,182, Ideally, I'd like that number to probably be a little higher with my 7-iron. With only 500 sets of these being made available, it's not like you're going to probably be able to walk into any club or pro shop and be able to pick up a set. But really what I think the Cobra Limited Irons are about is this is almost like a Formula One car or a NASCAR. It's a representation of what Cobra is capable of doing, what they're thinking about. And maybe Cobra is thinking lowering spin on irons. Maybe this is something that's a result of the 3D printing process and just the way that this iron is constructed. But distance is certainly there. Um, for a 7-iron, for me to be able to be carrying comfortably 175 with a 7-iron, that's about a full club longer than I carry my typical 7-iron. My 7-iron is usually somewhere around 157 to 160. So for me to be able to pop out a whole bunch of 174 7-irons, uh, that's pretty impressive. This, the lack of spin is a little bit concerning, except the height has been very, very good. So I would imagine that most of those balls would stop relatively quickly on the greens. It's not like I'm hitting them really far on a lower trajectory. That higher trajectory will stop the ball, but um, it's an impressive product. There's no question about it. Okay, so what did I learn about the Cobra Limited Iron? Well, number one, it definitely does look like a better player's distanced iron or a, some type of a muscle back blade. It has a shorter blade length, a thinner top line than you're gonna see from most game improvement irons but it definitely plays like a game improvement iron. It plays like a better player's distance club. The ball has a relatively soft feel coming off of it. I mean, I've certainly felt softer irons from Cobra. I think the Cobra King Tour has a softer feel than the Limited, but there's definitely a lot of jump with this one. It definitely sent the ball about a full club length farther than what I am used to. Again, at least today, I was pulling the ball a little bit and that will add some distance to it, certainly. Um, but I was really interested in seeing how low spin this iron was. Hitting a seven iron with only about 4,500 to 5,000 RPM of spin is low. I would want more spin from that. But because of the ball speed and because of the distance, it was getting some stopping power. It came down vertically enough where most of those shots were stopping within a few yards of where they were landing. So again, with a seven iron scoring club, that's what you're gonna be looking for. At $3,000 for a set and only 500 sets, again, being made available globally, this is not an iron you're going to probably have an opportunity to buy. You're not going to see this out in the wild. But again, I look at this as something of a demonstration of what Cobra is capable of, where they think golf equipment manufacturing and golf club iron manufacturing is going in the future. And so for that, it's really cool because if 3D printing can be brought down in price enough, it opens up a whole new world for experimentation and for uh, designers to really let their imagination flow and all of a sudden that could open up a world of possibilities in terms of performance especially for mid and higher handicap players players who want something that looks really good in their bag but they need a lot more help an iron like this is the perfect example of that this is going to look like a better player's iron when it's sitting in your bag it is going to play like an iron that is probably much more beneficial and much more appropriate for somebody who's playing off of say 12, 15, 18 in handicap who needs more distance, who needs more forgiveness. It just masks it really, really well. And that's what 3D printing may end up being, uh, being best able to do. So look, if you have any questions about the Cobra Limited Iron, you want me to answer them, please drop them in the comment area below. I'm happy to try and answer anything I possibly can for you. And if you liked this video, it would be great if you would consider subscribing to my channel, as well as banging on that like button and maybe sharing it with a friend as well. That always helps out. So thanks a lot and I look forward to seeing you again soon.